Welcome distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends. On behalf of Command Sergeant Major David Lee Jr., Director, the Sergeant's Major Academy, welcome to the graduation ceremony for the Sergeant's Major course, Distance Learning. Ladies and gentlemen, the invocation will be given by our chaplain, followed by the playing of the national anthem. Please pray in your faith as I pray in mine. Let us pray. Lord God, we just pause right now, thanking you for this opportunity to celebrate the graduates of the Sergeant Major course, Distant Learning. We thank you for their challenges. We thank you for their commitment. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for their integrity and the ability to sustain and maintain as they dealt with these courses. Now, Lord, I ask that the things that they learn not go in vain, but that the things they learn, they utilize in their current position and then some. Allow them to be the effective leaders, but most of all, to always lead from the front. We ask your blessing upon their lives now and forevermore. Bless them and their families as they continue to do great things, but most of all, continue to do it in excellence. Amen. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Who say does that star-spangled banner yet Good morning. On behalf of the Commandant of the Non-Commissioned Officer Leadership Center of Excellence, Command Sergeant Major Jason Smith, welcome to today's virtual graduation. My name is Command Sergeant Major Todd Shirley, Deputy Commandant of the Center of Excellence. I'm honored to be here today to provide you some opening remarks about this day. To be a graduate of the Sergeant's Major course is a once in a lifetime achievement that most will not attain. To be clear, only 1% of the soldiers who enlist in the Army will ever make it this far. That says a lot about you as a person, a soldier, a professional, and a leader. Congratulations, you made it. As a graduate of non-resident Sergeant Majors Corps Class 36, I know what you went through to complete this milestone. You went to work each day, doing the job that you were trained for whether it was for the Army, like myself, or your civilian job, like many of you in the Guard and Reserve. Then you would come home to your studies, spending long hours in the night reading, writing papers, doing research, practical exercises, taking tests, all while sacrificing quality time with your family and your friends. Your road to success was much longer than our resident students but you have accomplished the same goals, learned the same things, got the, t the same 1059. You are now part of the alumni who can proudly say, I'm a graduate of the Sergeant's Major Academy, a member of Class 46. As we all know, things change with time. We as an Army and an educational institution must adapt the way we educate senior NCOs to keep up with the changing doctrine, regulations, lessons learned, and new, new technologies. Not to mention the changing paradigms in social economics and global nation states, both friends and foe. I can tell you, the course that you have completed 
is much different from the one I took 10 years ago. The rigor is far greater than what I experience, and the course requirements today are on par with the resident course, not two years behind like it used to be. This is a college level course that rivals most universities of today. The Sergeant's Major course provides you the tools to develop your critical reasoning, critical thinking, and decision making skills. It takes you from a tactical level of thinking to an operational strategic perspective in order to prepare you for leadership positions in organizations executing unified land operations. It also prepares you for leadership positions and joint assignments, as well as battalion, brigade, and division through echelons above corps, staff sergeant major, and command levels. Be proud of your accomplishment. Take what you learn and be the leader you would want to be led by. Live the Army values and lead by example. Ultima, Army Strong. The Sergeant's Major Course Distance Learning is a 24-month program of instruction designed to prepare senior non-commissioned officers for assignments in positions throughout the Department of Defense. These students have successfully completed their final requirements of the Sergeant's Major Course. On 17 May 1972, General William Westmoreland, the Army Chief of Staff, approved the creation of a senior level course for the non-commissioned officer education system. General Ralph E. Haynes, Jr., the commander of the Continental Army Command, also favored its creation and issued General Order 98, officially creating the Academy effective 1 July 1972. The first class started six months later in January 1973. When the Sergeant's Major Academy began operations, it already planned to offer a distance learning version of the Sergeant's Major course for National Guard and Army Reserve non-commissioned officers. The first distance learning class began with 55 students in July 1974 and graduated two years later in July 1976. Less than half of those who started graduated, with only 22 students completing the course. Today, each class has hundreds of students and a graduation rate of 75% and commonly includes regular Army non-commissioned officers. Three Air Guardsmen have also graduated the program since its inception. Through most of its history, the course has been called the Sergeant's Major Distance Learning Course, but for a period in the 1990s, it was officially known as the Corresponding Studies Sergeant's Major Course. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest speaker. Hey, good afternoon, good morning, depending on uh, where you're at. Uh, I'm Command Sergeant Major Scott Hansen, the State Command Sergeant Major for the Nebraska Army National Guard and Senior Enlisted Leader here in the state. Hey, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, to the group here of the non-resident course uh, graduates of 21-02. Uh, you know, it's funny about the, the course numbers is 21-02 or 02-21 or 14-10, uh, really you're class 46. I, like you, I'm a graduate of non-resident uh, course uh, of class 38 um, a few years ago. And, uh, you know, initially after I graduated, I, I learned real quick, the Army goes by this cohort number, not by this phase three or phase two course. Um, so no, it's much easier to navigate as you go forward. It helps people identify when you went to this Army Major Academy and, and frankly, who your classmates are. Because it oftentimes there's a, there's a ebb and flow of Sergeant Majors in the Army and sometimes a certain class seems to be uh, in all the key positions. Uh, so congratulations to class 46 for uh, this accomplishment of uh, completing the SAR Major Academy and your final, uh, for, for many folks, the final step of their NCO professional development uh, formally. So with that, a little bit about myself. I, I did work here at the SAR Major Academy uh, a few years ago. I, I was selected uh, during the second cohort of the fellowship program. I attended Penn State for a year, taught in the resident SAR Major course for, for two years. A phenomenal experience. I recommend everybody consider it as you grow throughout your career. Uh, you know, it's one thing 
um, to teach. It's one thing to be an instructor in the Army. It's our major course at special because you get such a diverse group of, of students and faculty and partner nations and sister services. Uh, a really spectacular assignment helps broaden uh, and educate uh, you as a leader, as a, as a person. So, so as I as I thought about today and and thought, you know, what's the what's the theme I wanted to really share with you today? As you go forward into the ranks of a sergeant major, you represent me, the sergeant major of the army, um, all sergeant majors across the army, all all seven thousand ish of us. Uh, you know, what is it that I want to really share with you? And what I've what I've really realized in the last year is how much change we've really had to grow accustomed to. Significant amount of change, more so than any time in my life. Uh, from, from the time I joined the Army back in 1988, I did not experience as much change, uh, maybe more shock, but not as much sustained change as we have in this last year. You know, COVID has taught us a lot about how to, how to manage computers, how to do this face-to-face -face screen thing, uh, talk to one another remotely from a distance. Uh, it, this last year, we, we had civil unrest. The Guard was fairly busy, uh, but, but we're all busy. Um, the reserves were busy. Uh, the active duty was busy. We were all responding globally, maintaining our presence. Uh, and then on top of all of that, we had this PT thing change. Uh, and, and that has some, some uncertainty attached to it, which is hard to, to get after with the change. Uh, politically and socially, you just don't know what's going to happen. I, I believe this, what's going to happen is we're going to have an ACFT starting in March of 22. Um, and it's going to be fair and unbiased and, and we're going to do great things for the Army. You know, on, on top of that, we got this whole uniform thing. We used to pin on everything. Now we got to sew things on again. So those that don't live near military bases got to figure out how we're going to sew on things again on our uniforms. Uh, and what else changed? Blended retirement system is starting to, starting to grab hold. That's another significant change from a senior mentor perspective. How do I mentor these young soldiers that are in the blended retirement system when I'm trying to figure it out still? So change is constant. Change is absolutely constant. And uh, this year has been no, absolutely no exception. So there's three things I want to talk about when it comes to change. One is um, what I call the big three. The chief of staff of the Army calls them the big three, suicide, EO, and sexual assault, sexual harassment. So uh, those, those three areas uh, this last year were on full display after the Fort Hood report, after the investigation, the leader development program afterwards. Um, you know, put, put simply, we're, we're a compliance-based organization is what we discovered. And we have a lot of hidden subcultures. Some of us know about them. Some of them do not. Um, so compliance-based, you know, it, it, we're really good at updating DTMS saying, hey, we're compliant. We're doing the required training you said we have to do. And most recently, we have uh, CUI training. We all have to do the CUI training. Uh, we'll comply. Yep, yeah, we'll get it done. We'll check the box. Trying to figure out what, what we really should commit to and what we should comply with is, is become a, a somewhat of a, a vague area. And it's really starting to expose some senior leaders on, on how they determine which is important, the priority of, of effort, if you will. So within, within the big three, uh, because of that investigation, I, I've, I've really explored all activities within uh, my organization. What are we really compliance based with and what are we really committed to? And if we're not committed to it, how important is it? Because some things, frankly, we, we have to do. Uh, and compliance is, is good enough, but, but every time we have a compliance-based activity, we run the risk of creating a new sub-culture sub or a hidden culture of, uh, of maybe marginal activity, which will skirt uh, to, toward the bad. So understand, with, uh, understand what those subcultures are within your organizations as you go forward, because they will constantly change. Uh, and you have to change with them and become aware of them. If you are not aware of them, or if you think you have none, uh, chances are then you're living in the dark because they're, they're out there. We just don't know what they are sometimes. The other thing is with leader development. You know, in the last year, uh, talent management has become the new buzzword. We got marketplaces. We got, uh, we got new assessment programs for sergeant majors and first sergeants and battalion commanders. We got all this leader development going on. At the end of the day, the words might change, but it's what we've been talking about for 20 years, 30 years. You know, do you have the right experiences? Do you have the right education? And have you self-developed? Um, you can't do that if you're an infantryman turned into an infantry NCO, staying in an infantry unit your entire career. 
You just can't, you can't get all three of those areas. At some point you have to experience TRADOC, the generating force, become a recruiter, drill sergeant, instructor, master gun. You, you got to do something um, other than just that, that one thing you're good at. Because eventually if your goal is to be a, be a sergeant major, and as you mentor those, uh, those, those senior NCOs below you, if the goal is to be a sergeant major, you got to be able to be holistic and, and be prepared to answer to, to very unique situations. And the last thing is, I like to echo Sergeant Major of the Army Grinston. Um, everywhere I go with this is my squad. Um, he, he loaded this about a year and a half ago. Uh, he said it took off a little bit slower than he would like. Um, I, I don't know why that is. I know my in my state, uh, my senior leaders embrace it. I embrace it. I share it everywhere I go. Because if we if we really, truly, genuinely own own that responsibility that the Army has asked us to own, and we care about everybody, the, the lame, lucky, and great, uh, a lot of these problems disappear. And life becomes uh, more challenged in a different way. And what I mean by that is if, if we really embrace everybody and we bring everybody up, then it becomes difficult to figure out who number one is. And I, I love that challenge set of having so many great people. I don't know which one is the best. It really depends on the task. So I challenge you to, to, to own that, embrace it, and, and get your NCO Corps to own it and embrace it, and then bring in those officers as well. So lastly, what I want to touch on um, is when it comes to when it comes to all this change, when it comes to all this change, it, it's not ever going to stop. And we all know this. We all know this. Uh, but one thing that a lot of folks don't really consider when you look at um, uh, be it suicide processing or sexual assault processing, leader development processing, tactical things we do tactically when we change our doctrine, um, when we're able to adapt to it, our potential goes higher. When we are unable to adapt, we begin to be perceived as, hey, we hit, we hit the top. We're no longer, can, we, we can't compete any longer. So change really helps to identify what potential is in each individual. So I encourage you to embrace change, show people that the potential for you to serve and serve your country, your unit, your community is higher than ever. And show that to your subordinates as you develop them. Because, uh, you know, those that can, can really be adaptive and agile uh, as we go through these changes, really help our Army grow like no other, similar to how our NCO professional development system has grown uh, exponentially over the last few years. So in closing, hey, thank you for serving. Genuinely, my family to yours, thank you for serving. Thank you. Uh, thank your loved ones for continuing to support you in your service. May God bless you and your family and all those in harm's way around the globe. Always ready, always there, Army strong. Thank you for your inspirational words of encouragement to the graduating class. During the course of study, each student was evaluated on his or her ability, aptitude, performance, and potential for assignment to positions of greater responsibility within the Department of Defense. The following senior non-commissioned officers, having successfully completed all requirements set forth by the Sergeant's Major Academy, are now considered graduates of the Sergeant's Major course, Distance Learning. At this time, we will have the playing of the Army song.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our graduation ceremony. Congratulations to these graduates of the Sergeant's Major Course, Distance Learning.